Hello guys and welcome back to Silence Tech. Today we're checking out MSI's Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard, which is priced at 189 UK pounds or around 209 US dollars. The motherboard still has the same LGA1151 socket as Z270, but if you've recently bought a shiny new 7700K processor, it will not work with this or any of the other Z370 motherboards. The lineup only offers support for Intel's 8th generation processors. MSI's Z370 Carbon AC motherboard has some of the best RGB lighting support allowing you to connect LEDs from multiple sources. I'll get into that a little bit more later in the video. My original sample from MSI unfortunately bricked itself when I tried to update the BIOS and that's why I missed the release date and there wasn't any video last week. I literally rage quit YouTube. <laughs> Thankfully the new board works perfectly and I'm finally able to deliver my thoughts on Z370 as a platform and Intel's newest Coffee Lake lineup. Opening up the box and taking a look inside, you get the usual documentation, a user guide and driver's disc. You get SATA labels, a high bandwidth SLI bridge and a whole host of RGB cables. There's two SATA ports, a dual band wireless AC8265 card with two antennas and lastly of course the rear IO shield. The motherboard has dual channel memory support allowing for a maximum of 64GB of DDR4 with speeds up to 4000MHz. It has three PCIe 3.0x16 slots, the top slot runs at x16, the middle slot runs at x8 and the last slot runs at x4. You'll be able to run up to three AMD cards in Crossfire and two Nvidia GPUs in SLI. The board also has three x1 slots available. For storage, there's six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports and two NVMe solid state M.2 slots, allowing you to raid two drives together, giving blistering loading times in your favourite games. For audio, the Z370 AC Carbon has Realtek ALC1220 Kodak 7.1 channel high definition audio, and testing the board's audio, I was really impressed, although I didn't notice much improvement compared to the previous generation. Generation. The board has gigabit LAN as well as Bluetooth supporting up to 4.2 and Wi-Fi. The dual band wireless AC8265 card fits into any times one slot, although it provides great Wi-Fi signal, it isn't exactly the most elegant solution from MSI. If we check out the rear I.O. the motherboard has from top to bottom and left to right two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, a PS2 keyboard and mouse combo for anyone keeping it old school, one display port for the CPU's onboard graphics, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A port, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports, one HDMI port, one LAN port, five OFC audio jacks, and lastly, one optical SPDIF out connector. Now let's take a look at the RGB lighting options. The Z370 AC Carbon motherboard provides a great way to get all of your RGB lighting in sync, even if it's from different brands. MSI's motherboard provides multiple RGB LED connections around the board. There's two standard 50-50 connectors, one free pin connector for Corsair's RGB strips and a rainbow connector at the bottom of the motherboard. A few pet hates I didn't like about this board is the fact there's no code reader or any dual BIOS feature. Plus there isn't an onboard power reset or clear CMOS button. Also when I installed the board inside my Corsair 570X case, the rear IO cover didn't allow enough clearance to install my rear HD120 RGB fan. In fact if you look at the rear IO, the ports are squashed down rendering most of them completely useless. The only real way around this is to remove the rear IO shield altogether. 
Moving on to overclocking, MSI very kindly provided me with Intel's newest i5-8600K, which has 6 cores, 6 threads, a base clock of 3.6GHz and a turbo clock of 4.3GHz. It also has 9MB of L3 cache and a whopping 95W TDP. At first I was very excited about the CPU, guessing it would be the go-to chip for new PC builders but the chip doesn't actually have hyper-threading. Anyway, let's see how it overclocks. When overclocking, I was able to get this chip up to 5.1 GHz stable when using MSI's Z370 AC Carbon motherboard. Temperatures were just as impressive as the overclock and it hits no higher than 69 degrees Celsius which is a perfect temperature for an everyday overclock. It was very impressive. I was able to get the chip up to 5.2 GHz but the increase in temperature just made it not viable for an everyday overclock in my opinion. Testing out the CPU with some benchmarks, on Cinebench R15, the 8600K had a multi-threaded score of 991 stock and 1194 with a 5.1GHz overclock. Such a shame it doesn't have hyper-threading, but it did beat out the 7700K clearly with those extra two physical cores. On Firestrike, the CPU scored 13,911, beating out the 7700K's 13,491, and testing was done at stock speeds on both CPUs. For gaming, with both CPUs overclocked, players are known battlegrounds at 1080p ultra settings, the 8600K performed extremely similar to the 7700K, only beating it out by a few frames. Battlefield 1, again, the 8600K beats out the 7700K ever so slightly by a few frames. And lastly, GTA 5, the 8600K edges ever so slightly ahead by 5 frames. Okay, now I'm seriously impressed with this chip. Single core performance of the 8600K is on par, if not better, than the 7700K. Plus, you're getting those extra two physical cores. That'll be great for work-related tasks. And unless the 7700K has a serious price drop, there's not going to be any reason to pick one up for a build in the future. My conclusion, Intel's decision to finally move its mainstream lineup of CPUs to 6 cores was a great idea. Clearly it was going to have to happen at some point, but thanks to AMD, they finally arrived a lot sooner than planned. As far as the Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard from MSI is concerned, it has a whole host of great features. It's basically a slightly better Z270 motherboard, which of course isn't a bad thing. Overall, the award for MSI's Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon is going to be gold. It's a great board which will last you a very long time. The 8600K is a great choice for gamers, although it might still be worth picking up a 7700K if its price drops. That said, Ryzen still offers great bang for buck, and there's so many choices, it's a great time to pick up a new CPU. My name's Mark from Silence Tech, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Goodbye.